What's the haps? I'm John, aka Maroka, and welcome to Spiral Spiel! This week we are in the Golden Rock Gate, which is, well, it's an undead themed thing. And I brought my wildfire because, hey, shiny new toys, let's play with those. If you didn't catch that, that was field tested on Sunday. I did a video on that, so you can go see me taking that out for spin, but obviously I'm going to take it out for spin now, so you will get to see more of it. You'll also be seeing plenty of this gun, I think, because I quite like this gun. This is my new Polaris, and I will attempt to get it heated up so that it is just as effective, I think. So, that'll probably be the first five-star thing I've heated in some time, if I'm honest. But there you go. Uh, I will note, uh, for some time this has been coming, I've actually... I, in recent times I've trimmed my friends list a number of times to prune out Deadwood, people who haven't logged on to the game in, like, over a year or more. I was like, they're probably not coming back anytime soon, I don't think I can... I don't think it's, I really need to keep them around for much. But yeah, obviously, uh, what with being on the YouTubes and whatnot, I do get people adding me uh, on a fairly frequent basis. And I don't, I don't object to that, if you want to add me, that's fine. But bear in mind that I've now cleared out everybody... Uh, last time I did my pruning a couple of weeks back, I got rid of everybody who hasn't logged on to the game in the last six months. So... Uh, yeah, I'm now, I've now gone through the sp most of the space I've made on my friends list. If you want to add me in-game, there are, like, less than 20 spaces left on my friends list after, after the latest round of prunings. Um, at which point I'm then gonna, have, I either need to sort of make the criteria even more stringent, you need to log on within the last three months or something, or, or I'll just go a different route, I don't know. Or just stop adding people, I don't know. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try, I suppose I could, I suppose if you were to just sever that off, I don't even contemplated this room before like that, I guess if you were to sever that off, that these, these cats would just never get to you, but I do want to let them out. I did want to let them out, why did that not work? Okay, fine, I guess I can never fight those cats. Stupid wide swing radius thing, I wanted to fight the things. Denied, utterly denied. There's no way to free them. Uh, there is a route down here I have not taken. How I get to down this way, I guess. So yeah, that's uh, that was the thing. If you want to, if you wish to add me in game, uh, your opportunities to do it for doing so are running low, low indeed. Uh, so make it fast, make it fast. I don't object, like I say. People want to do that. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I will object more to people adding me on Steam and Skype is definitely a no go. Those things don't bother unless, unless I unless I genuinely know you and you like talk to me like all the freaking time and leave comments on every single video I make. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know that guy. Uh, chances are I'm not going to add add you on those ones because I get a lot of people adding me. And I was like, I don't know who you are. I'd prefer to be able to play my games in peace. No offense, but there you go. I don't mind you. I'll, I'll chat to you in Spiral Nights, but uh, if I'm doing anything else. I prefer the solitude. I am a reclusive kind of introverted sort of person, so I like. I like to keep it that way. So yeah, those are things. Uh, let's do some Spiral Nights news, which really didn't warrant a jingle this week because there isn't any. So yep, that's done. Okay, um, what do I want rid of? Probably that. Let's get rid of that. I want the peels. I'm grabbing peels. Uh, so, uh, nobody left me any questions last week. Not one of you left me a question. A bunch of comments, but no questions. And I thrive on questions. They're what makes this show go around. So, I would appreciate if the people uh, who wish this series to continue might make a little bit more of an effort. So I know there's plenty of you watch it. There's a lot more people watch than leave comments. And if you enjoy the show, please show your support by leaving a question or topic or something for me to talk about. Rack your brains for a couple of minutes and come up with something that would be interesting that you wish to hear me uh, ponder over and amuse on and whatnot. And I'll give you a mini shout out, don't worry, I will mention your name and then you'll be famous for all of a few seconds on the internet. So that would be good. And then I've got something to talk about and we've got entertainment for the next coming week. And everybody wins. Everybody wins things like that. That is how everybody wins. So please remember to do that. Uh, once more, I'm going to, I suppose, have to uh, delve into Sky Scythe's ancient long, long, long list of things that he asked me about a long time ago. Uh, back at around episode 90, I think it was, which was about five months ago now, I guess. Yeah, that's been a while. So, still working from that list, still clearing up the bits, the bits that I'm prepared to talk about and want to answer. Uh, 
Before I get onto those, though, I suppose, channel stuff. So, last week I told you all to go watch 80 Days. None y'all did, apparently. Um, I'm... I got one comment on there from someone saying, oh, this is amazing, this is wonderful. I presume they particularly like that video. I'm sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to stop that series. Uh, firstly... It goes badly wrong, and I do really, really, really badly, and I just end up frustrated for like an hour in that game. And that game doesn't allow you to revert to old saves, it's constantly saving as you go along. So if you stuff up in 80 days, that's it, you're committed to having stuffed up. You can't improve the si- well, you can improve the situation, but you can't go back and just redo it without redoing the entire game. So I stuff up big time, and yeah, it's kind of- it's not fun for me to play, it's probably not fun for you to watch, and at this point in time, I'm getting the impression that nobody actually does want to watch it, because I'm getting less than 10 views on each video, so at that point, it's just not really in my interest to do so, so... Sorry, that's just... That, that, that's just not going to happen, I suppose, unfortunately. Right, uh, am I geared for undeads? Of course I'm not, because I'm st Still, for some stupid reason, running around in my charged Quicksilver stuff. I'm going to put an appropriate helmet on, I feel. I'm going to leave the charged Quicksilver armor on, because I am attempting to heat that up. But, we could probably stand to have something with a spot of shadow resistance. Uh, is that the best option? No. What are, we, what are we going up against? Going up against cats, which might be shocking me, I think. So, Snarblax, I guess, is my option here. Because I don't... I'm not sure if it's a shock thing. I, th I seem to recall seeing a lot of pale blue on the gate map. Uh, in this oh no, in this particular instance it's actually fire, so it wouldn't have been a bad option. Hey ho! Let's go on. Let's move onwards. Press onwards, slaughtering cats into the night. Like these ones. The ones that are on fire. Yep. Oh, that actually means my wildfire is less than effective. I suppose against, against cats, I suppose the Polaris actually is a better option. Maybe I need to make, like, separate loadouts for, like, um, cats and other things. Because I guess if you're going up against cats, I guess cats are more susceptible to shock, I believe, than fire. So you'd want to, be to use your Polaris. Uh, at the same time, some constructs, not all constructs, I don't think, but some constructs are more susceptible to fire than shock. So having the wildfire would be a better option. I might need to refine my loadouts a little. Just just thinking, musing on the gameplay here. Uh, to go back to where we were, which is uh, stuff that's on the channel at the minute. Uh, Karma Flow, that's uh, a new thing. That's super cool. The game really needs a little bit of polish. They kind I wish they'd spent like two weeks extra just to really tighten up the glaring bugs and performance issues. It really could have used just a couple extra weeks. And I wouldn't have objected to it being delayed at all. Uh, Fortunately, it runs suboptimally on my now actually pretty decent computer, so that's kind of disappointing. Uh, but on the whole, the game's actually pretty cool, so I'm gonna hold off on recording more of it for just a uh, just a short while. How I open door uh, with this? No, wait. Uh, that requires me to go that way. I see. I see. I see. I always forget how this one works. Yep, like that. There we go. Okay, zombie in my face and things shooting at me. Do not want. Can we just get away from all the things? Uh, so yes, Karma Flow. Karma Flow is excellent. It is the rock opera video game. If you're into the same kind of music as me, you rock and metal -y type stuff. Uh, they got some great artists doing the soundtrack to that. They've got uh, they've got the singer from Sonata Arctica and Dragon Force in there for crying out loud, uh, which, as I mentioned on a couple of occasions, are two of my favourite bands ever. And then there's a bunch of other great stuff as well, but I'm less familiar with their works than I am with uh, the likes of uh, Dragon Force and Sonata. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the first two. They, uh, I don't need to fight that lot. I can. I, I do not have time to fight that lot. That's a waste of my time and yours. Let's not bother with those ruffians. And what else we got? Uh, supposedly, allegedly, I believe. Uh, Raven's Cry, which I've been talking about for a while, is supposed to be out next week. Maybe. It might get delayed again, but um, it's supposed to be out next week. 
Um, Tengami came out last week. I'm not covering that on my channel, but I will give it a mention here because it is a beautiful and gorgeous sort of point-and-click puzzle game done in pop-up book style, and it's great. It's already on iOS and I believe the Wii, and I think they're working on Android next, which seems like an odd way to do it. You'd have thought Android would have been uh, higher up the chain of priorities for something that started out life as an iOS game, but uh, there you go. Yes, iOS, Wii, PC, Android is the development cycle for that particular title. Strange order of affairs, but I've been waiting on the PC release. And it is excellent. It is good. Uh, there was an initial bug on day one where you couldn't save the game, which was uh, unfortunate to say the least. It's only a very short game though, so... It's not too terribly crippling to try and play through the entire thing again. And that has been resolved now, I will note. So if you play the game now, you can save it now, so don't worry about that. So yeah, those are things I would recommend at the moment. I'm mostly getting that out of the way because we no podcast this week. Uh, Will was sort of... Uh, he had other, other other stuff going on at this week, so... Uh, he was unable to do the podcast, and we weren't going to do the podcast with just the two of us. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to make some game recommendations at the minute, because... Uh, hello, that's a, good, that's a good item to find. Uh, because otherwise I'm not going to get much opportunity to say, Hey, I've been playing all these things and they are awesome. I have plenty of opportunities to say such things, I just don't take them, I think. Uh, so yes, those are things. Oh, well, uh, also, oh, damn it, I looked, I looked at my notes and got hit by something. I don't even know what hit me. Probably a cat. Uh, someone mentioned in the comments a while back, actually, well, it wasn't that long ago, it was a few weeks back, I guess. Uh, they said, hey, why don't you check out this game, it's called Sky Saga. I was like, okay, I've never heard of this. Uh, but I will give it a look. Basically, it's in closed alpha at the minute, and through whatever strange quirk, twist of uh, circumstance, they've chosen only to open the closed alpha to people in the UK. Which, you know, hey, that works for me. I'm in the UK. Uh, so... So I got signed up to that, and a few weeks later, uh, as of, well, yesterday, I got the notification saying, hey, you've been invited to play this thing. I was like, oh yeah, the thing I signed up to. Uh, I honestly, I'd expect you to take a little longer than that, but there you go. So I have access to that. I'm really liking that. I may actually start doing some stuff on it. I know they're planning to do like server wipes next week, so I'll hang fire on that. No point in me starting doing something now and then having all my progress wiped like three days into doing something. So that's yeah, the Starbound way, you know, if anybody remembers the launch of Starbound and everybody trying to cover that at launch. Yeah, that didn't go well for a lot of people. Everyone's like, hey, check out this new game! Oh, they deleted my character. <laughs> that, that was not a fun time for peoples. So yeah, that's uh, probably something I will take a look at, actually. I'm liking that, I'm digging it. It's, 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 it's a Minecrafty kind of thing, but um, it's been described as Minecraft meets Legend of Zelda. I think it's got elements of a lot of things in there. It reminds me heavily of Cube World, which... Well, hey, I guess we need a new cube world, because God knows what happened to the last one. Uh, the actual one, the real cube world. I haven't heard anything on that particular score in uh, many a year at this point, I think? It's not even many a month, many a year. Years have passed since anybody's had anything to say on the matter of cube world. So yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, so it's got elements elements of Legend of Zelda, elements of Minecraft, elements of Cube World. It does even feel a little bit Starboundy, actually, to me. There's uh, going around exploring random worlds, and uh, the way the combat system works feels, I guess, like a 3D Starbound. Actually, there's elements of a lot of cool stuff going on in that, and I would like very much to cover that just for a little while on my channel. So yeah, that's something I could dig. Alright, that's enough channel stuff, let's do some questions. So, this, uh, this stuff is going to be some uh, possibly divisive stuff, I guess. Because nobody asked me any nice, sensible questions that isn't going to uh, uh, cause boos and hisses and derision. Uh, we've got uh, Sky Scythe asks Scientology! Is it harmful or beneficial to the collective mind? The individual? Why? Eesh! Scientology, really? You want me to talk about that? Alright, 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 alright. Jeez. It's not one I've looked forward to talking about. Uh, the problem with Scientology, I feel, is it's probably fairly hard to debate. I mean, from the outside, from anybody who is not Scientology, is he a, a member of Scientology, a Scientologist, uh, it's kind of easy to go, ah, yes, it, they're all absolutely insane, it's a complete cult, it's a, stray, it's a weird thing made up by a science fiction author uh, so that he could be a leader and make a lot of money, and it's pretty easy to shut down like that. 
and I won't necessarily object to it, but the fact is that myself, as well as most of the people, only ever get the media and pop culture side of things, which is, like your South Park, this is what Scientologists actually believe, which is them dumping spaceships full of trillions of souls into volcanoes, and they then went on to form all the negative parts of humans or something, and them then, like, nuking the volcanoes with hydrogen bombs and stuff, I don't know. It's all very strange, and I think this is this sort of thing where it's, it's very hard to confirm for any, or any, in any real sense, whether that's actually what Scientologists actually believe or not, because they won't, they, it's supposed to be secret stuff, that stuff they won't tell you about. Chittering burrows, oh, that's undead. Right, of course it's undead, we're in an undead thing, so I guess my weapons will suffice here. So yeah, it's very hard to confirm where that's the thing because that's supposed to be. That's that, they don't they don't tell you that as soon as you sign up for Scientology, as far as anyone can make out. Uh, most most of, most reports of anything Scientology does on the inside is mostly what you get from ex members that are like, oh, I used to be in Scientology, then I realized it was a crazy cult, and then I left, and here's all the things that I know about Scientology. Because the guys that actually are members won't talk about it. Uh, so the only time you actually get any information is people who were on the inside and now are no longer. So, he's, it's still a biased viewpoint. It's sort of people like, oh, I realized it was a crazy cult, so I know I decided to get out of the crazy cult. And so you, we never, you never get a rational debate with a Scientologist, is kind of where I'm going at. Whether you could or not is another matter, because obviously I could say it's kind of got a certain degree of uh, religious zealotry going on. And... They probably wouldn't be willing to talk, and if they did talk, it might not be too rational. I don't know. That's the thing. The, pro the problem is everything you get is one-sided. It's all anti-Scientology. It's anti-Scientology. And I could talk, and I would probably tell you the same things. It's like, oh, yes, they do crazy, unscientific experiments that are, they're like, e-meters and stuff. It's like people... Uh, Ex-members have sold them on eBay and stuff, and people have dismantled them and examined them. And it's just like a metal tube that you grip onto, and it doesn't really do anything. But the Scientologist will tell you that it can read your spirit and soul and whatever the heck. They, but whatever strange concepts they believe in. And there's absolutely no scientific grounding, and the devices don't even really do much at all. Which is, yeah, okay. But at the same time, we've not actually heard... You never, you never get the other side of the argument. You never get a scientist saying, "Actually, this is what it does. This is how it works. These are the readings. We, well, this is because of this. We believe this." Other members of other religions generally, you know, if so, if someone, someone has something to say about it, they'll often sort of take the time at the very least to, you know, try and set the record straight. You'll say, "Oh yeah, this is not quite the crazy cult that it appears to be. Actually, what we believe is this." And the the media has been uh, grossly misinformed about the nature of things. And yes. Here's 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 how it goes down. Uh, don't don't believe everything you hear on Fox News and all that. Ow, oh, God! I'm gonna get myself killed. I can see this. Um, have fire. Yep. Well, I set them on fire. My work here is done. Fiends. Why do I have to be fiends? I didn't bring any piercing weapons either, so that's gonna make life difficult. Ouch! God damn, Gorgos. They have really had the worst. Right, you're dead. Um, there's a healer over here, which I suppose should be exploded. Don't want the healers. Oh, man. So my choice is Gorgos or Devilites. Wow. What an option. Oh, no, I've got to go through the Gorgos to get to the Devilites. I see, I see. That's how it goes down. Um, I'm going to pop back through here. Come on, through the gap, through the gap. Can I get you with the wildfire? I bet I can. I'm going to want to take that pill as well, I think. I know I've stopped talking about any topics, but I really want to focus on killing these guys, because otherwise uh, my mission is going to end here, I feel. I don't, really don't want to use a spark of life today. Really do not. I know I've got plenty of them, but this is not the time to be using them, I feel. Come on. You're, you're down. Good. That's one. You're stood there in explosive? Oh, no. No, no, no. Can I, oh, can I get a damage boost? Yes, yes I can. Gonna want that. Pow! Gotcha. Okay. Right, use my damage boost to my advantage. Slaughter all the Devilites and freedom. Okay, right. That was good. That 
damage buff came at exactly the right time to get through that lot. Cool. They're down. So yeah, there's a lot of the stuff Scientology does is would be really hard to defend, I feel, but at the same time, no one ever actually even if you even if you give them the opportunity to defend it, they'll just be like, oh, no, I refuse to talk about it and won't defend it. So even even if we're like, oh, these are terrible things, they're doing terrible things to individuals and groups and they're separating people from families. If they if, if their family isn't Scientology, they're not allowed to have any contact with them, they must be cut off from the outside. Which sounds terrible for families and communities and things, but at the same time, you never get to hear what they have to say on the matter, so it's kind of, it's, it's just a one-sided thing and it's very difficult to actually debate with any manner of rationality, to be honest, because all we get is people mocking and deriding them, which is not really a rational debate when it comes down to it. Mocking and derision does not constitute um, rational thought. So, carrying on with the, hey, let's talk about in, entire groups of people if, um, in an unfavorable light. Uh, we've got uh, members of the Islamic faith reject science and are typically uh, uh, vehemently opposed to critics of the religion, damn near infringing on free speech laws. Why is this? Really? That's a loaded question and a very large sweeping generalization, I would say. You're so, uh, that question just seems to imply that every single Muslim is opposed to free speech and is taking your freedoms, which very much sounds like you've been watching too much Fox News, if I'm honest. Uh, basically, uh, I wouldn't agree that is the case. There are a few extremists, and obviously this is very topical given uh, the recent events over in France and whatnot, uh, but let us not forget that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Islamic faith uh, has 1.5, I did look this up, 1.57 billion members. There are 1.57 billion Muslims in the world. Are you saying every single one of them objects to your free speeches and your freedom of being American and whatever? You're not even American, you're Canadian, I believe. Are you not? I don't know. Either way, um, like I say, outside world, they are both next to each other, they're both pretty much the same. Yeah. That's that's my racism for the day. <laughs> yeah, America, Canada, pretty much much of a muchness. Yeah, why not? So yeah, members of the Islamic faith uh, probably are generally speaking fairly reasonable people. Uh, if you look at again to go to go back to the uh, recent events, you kind of got your Charlie Hebdo attacks and whatnot, and a lot of threads are like asking asking Muslims, what do you think about? the Charlie Hebdo attacks, and I was like, oh, this is terrible, we absolutely do not condone this in the slightest, these are horrible people, no, no, these are, these are extremists who don't represent the majority of the Muslim population. Yes, these are the kind of people you're talking about when you say they object to free speech, and yeah, okay, the Charlie Hebdo attacks. Uh, is, is this a matter of free speech? A lot of people have made it into a matter of free speech. Um, and, I don't know, I don't necessarily think it is. Because you've actually had quite a lot of articles pop up in the wake of that saying uh, To call it free speech you have to be making a reasonable point most of what Charlie Hebdo did was just attacking religions and Groups of people there's a lot of they did a lot of racist a lot of homophobic stuff in their content and Honestly, they weren't that great. There was quite a lot of articles that were like je suis Charlie no, non, je, je ne suis pas Charlie. Charlie was kind of an asshole, actually, if we're honest. Uh, most of their stuff was just like, ah, look at these stupid Muslims, look how terrible they are. And I believe their defense is, oh, we're equal opportunity offenders, which a lot of people have used as just kind of a cop-out to say, yeah, we're attacking everybody and we don't care. We're just, it's, it's, it's just a cop-out for being being an asshole, basically. It's like, I want to attack everybody and ha have no... Have have nobody be able to criticize me. I, you can't criticize me, it's free speech. Yes it is, but the freedom freedom of speech only protects you from from censorship by the government. It doesn't stop... Uh, freedom of speech doesn't mean other people can't tell you you're a dick for saying what you're saying. And quite frankly, if the, mo the most compelling argument you can, you've got for saying... For, uh, for saying what you say is it's not technically illegal uh, then maybe maybe you could have a, put a little bit of a better compelling compelling argument if that's the only defense you got is it's not illegal you don't have a very good argument in the first place 
So yeah, the Charlie Hebdo stuff. There, there's a lot of really good satirical stuff out there. You've got your Onion in the UK. We've got uh, Daily Mash, which is uh, very much a British Onion equivalent. And they do some very good, interesting, cutting satirical stuff. It's always quite amusing. Um, and then you've got Charlie Hebdo, which is sort of like, oh yeah, we're like The Onion. It's like, no you're not. The Onion's funny. You're just being racist. And being racist isn't really all that funny. Unless you are also a racist. So, uh, yeah, I'm not big on the whole Charlie Hebdo thing. And I think the people who are defending it as free speech, uh, it's, it's more, it seems more like people have just got an axe to grind and are just using this as an excuse to continue grinding said axe. So yeah, one can't make sweeping generalizations about a few extremists, and if we look at damn near any other group that's got any kind of argument to make, there's going to be a few extremists to tie it into other things that are going on at the minute involving said extremists. I suppose we can look at Gamergate, and most of what you see, if you were to, so this is obviously the debate about, well, ethics in games journalism is the way Gamergate is painting it, but at the same time, the way your media is painting it is it's a bunch of misogynists attacking women and minorities in the gaming industry. And, yeah, those are the two extremes, really. It's going, well, okay, the uh, ethics in games journalism aren't really extremes, but uh, most of what gets painted in the media is the extremes. So when you say, oh, this is a bunch of terrible, terrible misogynists just using it as an excuse to attack women. Yeah, okay, I can't deny that there are definitely some people in the Gamergate category that are doing that. Uh, there are a lot of people like, no, no one in our group would do that. And like, Look at your group. There clearly are people doing that. It's ridiculous to say that's not happening. It blatantly is happening. That is a thing that is happening. Uh, hang on, what are, we, what are we fighting here? Gate map. It's Chittering Burrows, which is undead, but I guess... I, I, I guess that's fiend coloured, so that, I should have expected fiends there. I guess this is beasts. So I should expect beasts, right? So... Actually, that would be a better one to bring, I suppose. Aha! I think I'm learning the ways of the compounds over a year after they were added to the game. If not much longer. When were the compounds added? Long time ago. No, they're undead. Oh, good. Right, okay. Well, I guess I expected some undead, because Chittering Burrows, but... I, I had not anticipated zombies. Hey-ho. So, yeah, even even in the anti-Gamergate category, you've kind of got... If you go onto uh, the, their, their appropriate subreddit, is uh, Gamergutz, I think uh, G-H-A-Z-I, I'm not even sure how you pronounce it or what it's supposed to be, but you kind of got your Tumblr in action... Not Tumblr in action. Tumblr in action is actually quite an entertaining subreddit. Um, uh, Kotaku in action, which has borrowed their naming convention, uh, is... Um, is your primary Gamergate kind of source, and your anti-Gamergate is kind of your Gamergutsy. And you browse either of them, and it's like both of them are kind of filled with extremists, and you've got the you know, Gamergutsy like, oh, they're all terrible people, every single one of them must be eliminated, uh, destroy all men kind of thing. It's like, really? Chill out. And then on the Gamergate side of things, you've got a lot of people like, oh, we must attack Anita Sarkeesian and drive her to suicide and stuff. It's like, well, no, you mustn't. Don't be bloody ridiculous. There's obviously a lot of moderates on both camps. A lot of people who are interested in improving the state of games journalism, and then you've got a lot of people who are interested in sort of improving the in in industry without hate and removing sort of hate-filled messages and harassment and stuff in the industry. And it's like, yeah, but all anyone's talking about is the extremists. It's It goes for any walk of life. All we end up talking about is the extremists and stuff. And the the bigger picture, the actual message that anyone's trying to make is completely lost. As I say, to go back to Muslims, you got 1.7 billion people. Do the people who attacked? Wow, I that wasn't even flying. That shouldn't have damaged me. God damn it! Do the people who attacked Charlie Hebdo represent 1.57 billion people? No, no, they don't. Of course they don't. Don't be ridiculous. It's too big and too diverse a group, and. You get people like, oh, the, the entire Muslim population should be call, calling out to, to condemn their actions. Most of them are, but let's be honest, you don't expect that of any other group in the world either. If some white guy goes insane and starts shooting women in a school because they wouldn't sleep with him, for example, does the rest of the... Do, are we then calling on the rest of the entire white population in the world to condemn their actions because they were the same colour as them? 
or whatever other tangentially related, barely incidental kind of coincidence happened to be. No, most a lot of people will condemn those actions. In fact, a vast majority of people condemn those actions. Do we have to stand up in public and every single one of us go, Yes, I condemn them. I do not think that what they did was a good thing. And uh, they do not represent my race and my people. Uh, they they are not one of us. I was like, no, we don't... No other group in the world would you expect that to. But whenever something happens with uh, Islam and uh, some extremist Muslim attacking people for whatever reason, we're like, oh, the rest of the Muslims should be standing up to condemn these actions. Did I read a beastie thing as a... Did I read a gremlin thing as a beastie thing? Is that what I've done here? I may have done that? That seems like I may have... Stuffed this up, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this weird double standard where any other group in the world, if they, some, some extremist stands up and does stuff, they're like, Oh yes, but the rest of the group should not be held to those standards. That's... that's... I don't... don't be silly. And then you kind of get... When Muslims like, Oh, well, everybody else should be condemning them or... You, you're, you're, your default position must be that you support them. If you do not condemn them, you support them. It's like, no. It's just... For a lot of people, it's something that happened in another country on the other side of the world. It might have made a few news headlines, and uh, coincidentally, the people that perpetrated it happened to believe that they were part of the same religion that you were, whether or not they've interpreted it the same way. But for them, it's just... You know, so someone in the Middle East, these are events that are going on in France, and it's like, well, it's 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 still news on the other side of the world. How, how do we react to news on the other side of the world? We might go, oh, this is terrible, what a tragedy, these things are happening, but it doesn't really affect us because it's miles and miles away. We don't really think about it, and Muslims are exactly the same. They are still human beings. They still react to things in the same way that anybody else does. If something goes... If, if, if you're living... If you're living thousands and thousands of miles away from France and something goes on in France, even if it does immediately concern people claiming that this is the one true path of Islam and destroy all journalists who would depict uh, Muhammad and what have you, it's still not really terribly immediately impacting on them other than the way the world views them because for some reason they held some entirely ridiculous different standard to everybody else. It's insane. It really is. I don't know why we would do that. So yes, no sweeping generalizations, please. Not appreciated. Um, I feel like I've rambled on those points long enough and it's kind of... I've, I've been all over the place. It's not something I'm well versed to talk about. I know what my thoughts are on it. I don't know whether I can coherently put them across. The problem is I spend a lot of time trying to phrase things so that I don't sound like I'm strongly in favor of any particular thing. I try to maintain a neutral stance on these things. It's like, uh, like with the Gamergate thing, it's like, yeah, I'm sort of, I, I would fall very much into the total biscuit camp of, yes, don't harass people. Harassing people is a dick move. Also, can we also please, you know, is it too much to ask that, uh, when a journalist is talking about writing about their best friend's game or their roommate's game? Maybe they could mention that one in the article before saying how wonderful a game it is. Is that too much to ask? It doesn't seem like it's too much to ask. It seems like, it, uh, ju ju judging by the standards that a number of YouTubers have held themselves to, I feel like it's pretty easy to do. I've made a, I've made a few critique videos by, of, of games by developers that I know reasonably well. In recent times, I took a look at Elegy for Dead Worlds. I started the video. It was pretty easy to say. Uh, yeah, I, I spent quite a, quite a while talking to Dejban and Pop Cannibal about this, their games. I, I've met Ichiro on a bunch of occasions. I know these guys, so yeah, I'm probably kind of biased in this thing. Nonetheless, here's my here's my thoughts, and interpret them as you will. Understand that my opinions will be coloured by this. Everyone's opinions are going to be coloured by something. There's no such thing as an unbiased review, but at the same time, as long as you understand where the review is coming from, uh, we shouldn't really have any issues. It's when you just assume that they're completely, utterly, sort of, entirely disconnected to all events, and then it turns out they're not. That's when people start kicking off and having issues, and it's a problem. Um, okay, there's a lot of things here, and I'm hoping the switch is over this side of the room, otherwise I'm going to have trouble getting back. Uh, can I get over here? Yes, yes I can. That's the switch. That's the last switch. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I don't want you. Go away. Terrible, terrible things. 
So yay, that's me talking about extremism. Never ask me to talk about extremism again. That was an awkward freaking episode for me. Um, and I would appreciate it if people asked me something more neutral, maybe something about science. I can talk about science. I don't like talking about religion. Religion just tends to... I probably... I, I may well have, have wound up a lot of people by talking about what I've talked about today, and I apologize if I have. Like I say, I've tried to stay neutral on things. Uh, it is possible to... It is possible to sit in the middle. You are... You don't have to be this withers or against us mentality. It doesn't have to be you are on the extremes. You can take a neutral standpoint on things, and I do try to be fairly neutral. I try to be Switzerland. Uh, Basil! Sell me some guns. Sell me something nice. Omega Shell, Iron Slug, Chaos Cloak, Sunset Stetson. None of these are fun things. Uh, plated Falcon Shade Armor. Is that a thing I need? I think that's a thing I need. That might be a thing I need. Not necessarily, not necessarily immediately, but I think it might be a thing I need. I'm not sure. Oh, either way, I've been talking for long enough, so nuts to that. So yes, thank you very much for watching. This, uh, this has dragged on a little while, so... Thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. Please, for the love of God, leave me some comments with some topics below so I don't have to talk about religion next week. Uh, I'll see you next time.